So hey man, I heard you do jujitsu. That's awesome. Yeah man, I really love it. So how long have you been doing it? I've actually been doing it for a while now. Uh, since like 1998, so I guess like 22 years. 22 years? Wow! You must be like a third or fourth degree black belt by now. Actually no, I'm a purple belt. Oh, I get it. I get it. So you just don't have an, a black belt instructor near you, so you he can't promote you. I, I, I get that. Actually, I do have a black belt instructor. Uh, his name's Glenn. Oh, so well, you just must not see your instructor a whole lot or, or something like that, right? No, actually, I train with Glenn a few times a week. Well, you must have been wronged in some way, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it in our following conversation. Hi guys, I'm Daniel, and that conversation that you just saw, I've had many, many, many similar conversations over the years uh, from white to purple belt, and you heard right, I am a 22-year practicing purple belt, and I do have a black belt instructor, and I just have not been promoted. So, uh, how does this happen? The, I am not alone on this. There are many of you that are watching this right now that uh, have been practicing for many, many, many years and have not gained society's expectation of where you should be as far as belt level. So typically what you see is a person goes, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, if you're new to this, a person goes from white to blue belt in anywhere from two to four years. Uh, purple belt is typically anywhere from the four to six year range. Uh, brown belt is going to be around 8 to 10 years, and then you get a black belt typically after 10 years of consistent training. So how does this happen? How does a person uh, train this often and end up with a purple belt? Well, it's very simple, and all of you out there uh, in my shoes can attest to this. It has to do with consistency. Inconsistency. So. When I, when I did start in 1998, I'll, I'll go into a little bit of my story, and I'm sure that a lot of you guys have the, a, the same story or a similar story to uh, what I had. Whenever I started in 1998, here in the Midwest, there were basically no jiu-jitsu schools around. So, what did I do? I jumped on an airplane, and I went to California for a week. And back then, the Gracie Academy used to have a week-long in basic instructional series where you could learn the very basics of jiu-jitsu. You go six hours a day, five days a week. Um, so I did that, came home. Um, my brother did the same thing. And so I just trained with my brother because there was really nowhere to go here. Uh, we just trained with each other in the basement over and over. Uh, we had the Gracie instructional tapes that we would watch and we would practice the moves over and over. And uh, we continued that for, uh, you know, a year or two, and then um, jujitsu jiu jiu started getting a little bit bigger, and we started having uh, Ricardo Almeida would come to Kansas City, which is, uh, uh, you know, a few hour drive from us, but we would go up there and see him and see his seminars, and of course what we were doing was so basic that what Ricardo Almeida was doing was like, so far ahead as far as we were like looking into the future whenever we'd go to a Ricardo Almeida seminar and then we would go back and me and my brother would just practice that and train that and train that and then I hooked up with a couple other guys that just kind of grappled here and there and nobody was of high level at all and we just rolled with each other and grappled and so that was up until 2002 that's just kind of how we got down and even though I competed it was the level was so low. It was a very, very low level basically everywhere. Yeah, even people that were wearing jiu-jitsu black belts in, in, in the area were, uh, man, they just weren't that good. And so in 02, uh, I met Glenn, and Glenn was not a jiu-jitsu black belt or anything at that like that at that time, but he was a, a judo black belt. Um, and he had some wrestling experience, and he had some really, at that time, super advanced uh, leg locks, so I hooked up with him and started training with him, and everything was going really well, and 
I was really gaining in, in my abilities. And I was competing and doing this stuff. And then what? Oh, I, I see something shiny over here. So I decided that I'm going to start doing Muay Thai and boxing. And I basically, even though I still practice Jiu Jitsu, um, I didn't really train Jiu Jitsu, if that makes sense. So I would tr definitely train boxing. I was training boxing constantly. And at first I trained Muay Thai and then I just went straight to boxing. I had a boxing coach and um, I kept practicing like that. Uh, as far as boxing goes and the jiu-jitsu I would do once in a great while I'm talking a couple times a month that's not even enough to really maintain any skill and my skill level wasn't that high anyway so I, I boxed for a while and then I got injured boxing and then after you know I, the injury then I didn't really want to come back and do much jiu-jitsu and then whenever I did come back and do jiu-jitsu I was a fool and got myself injured again, uh, and then I made excuses. I, I got married, I had a change of careers. You know, every excuse that you can imagine I made, and all of it ended up with inconsistency. So now I can say that I have trained jujitsu for 22 years, but it's been so inconsistent that really I'm only at a purple belt level. This is the right belt for me, okay? and. Although I'm not ashamed of the belt, I wish that I would have been more consistent in my past. I wish I would have been more in, more consistent in training and things like that. But the fact is, almost all of us that have been training for a long time have had life get in the way. And don't be ashamed of where you are in jiu-jitsu. Everybody's on their same path. And even though you may have regrets about being inconsistent in the past, the future is what matters. The now, the present and the future is what matters. So I've been very consistent with, with the last few years of, uh, of training again, and it shows in my abilities. It shows in my techniques. And, you know, the, the 10,000 hour rule, I'm a big believer in. So you do 10,000 hours of any one thing and you'll become an expert in that thing. I've done thousands of hours of jujitsu, but they haven't been, uh, one after another hours. It's been sporadic. And I don't have 10,000 hours in jiu-jitsu yet. I'm looking forward to getting 10,000 hours in the future. But kind of the purpose of this video is don't be ashamed. Do not be ashamed of what belt level you're at. Don't be ashamed because society tells you that at this point in your career, you should be a fourth degree black belt and have your own gym and affiliations and everything else, okay? I'm a proud purple belt, okay, and I will be a proud brown belt, and one day I'll be a proud black belt, and I'll my journey will be different than everybody else's. But that being said, I know there's more of you out there. We're out there, guys who have been doing this for a very, very, very long time and have a low belt level. So that's it, guys. Uh, don't be ashamed. Let me know in the comments if you if you're a, a quick guy, a guy who's been promoted very quickly. There's no shame in that either. If you're a guy who's been promoted very slowly, let me know, man. We're out there. I know we're there. So uh, anyway, guys, uh, quick video. We'll see you guys later. Move on down. Hard work, work. to go. Make the call. Hard work, work. Banging on the doors in the morning.